Um, our project is microbial electrolysis cell for hydrogen production and electricity generation. I'm Abraham Arvizu. I'm Claire Bukowski. I'm Gabriel Schoen. And I'm Zachary Fine. Here is our design day poster, which we will be going over part by part. Our team is using our project to address important energy crisis issues by finding new ways to harvest hydrogen from wastewater. Our team found that many forms of hydrogen production rely on harmful fossil fuels that have costly expenses for the environment. We decided to create a project that would maximize hydrogen production from wastewater. At the same time, we also will minimize the hydrogen greenhouse gas emissions and will ensure safety on the site. In order to accomplish this goal, our team set out to Specifically, it design a project for a wastewater treatment facility that will generate enough hydrogen that can be either sold or used for electricity generation. With the objective of adding on to an existing wastewater treatment facility, we decided to go with the Trace Rios Water Reclamation Facility to give us a base flow rate to work with. That comes out to roughly 30 million gallons of wastewater per day, and about 1% of that is watered sludge by volume. To keep track of all our numbers and calculations, we used Google Spreadsheets. Our team also used Lucidchart to create our PNID and Smartsheets to keep track of our assignments and better divide up the work to be more efficient. And the creation of hydrogen is a process of microbial respiration, uh, specifically fermentation. Uh, so we looked at a few studies, and one study looked at the kinetics of, of fermentation of cheese whey by Klebsiella aerogenes, uh, formerly known as Enterobacter aerogenes until 2017. Uh, and this was to produce hydrogen gas. Uh, it took roughly 72 hours for most of the hydrogen to be produced. Uh, with a severe reduction in the production rate occurring after those 72 hours. Uh, another study also uh, looked at the kinetics of fermentation of food and vegetable waste and showed a pretty similar time scale with the hydrogen production capping out at about 60 to 67, or sorry, 66 hours. Um, and one last study that we looked at was the adapt or sorry, adaptation of extreme thermophilic bacteria in 70 degrees Celsius household solid waste. Uh, and the study found that through repeated batch cultivation, sorry, repeated batch cultivation of the bacterial cultures, uh, the bacteria actually ended up producing more hydrogen. Uh, and just a fun little note, a uh, Klebsiella aerogenes is pathogenic and is also in the same genus as Klebsiella pneumoniae, which is the bacteria that's responsible for bacterial pneumonia. And the sizing and the cost were calculated for the gear pumps, uh, the heat exchangers, and the reactor tank. Uh, and this was done by using the bare module factor for each piece of equipment. Uh, this resulted in a total gear pump cost uh, of $17,000, uh, two heat exchangers costing roughly $140,000 total, and <laughs> nearly $4.8 million for the reactor tank. Uh, this is all supposed to handle 30 million gallons of wastewater per day, and naturally, you're going to need some big equipment. Wastewater sludge is pumped at the rate of 300,000 gallons per day and heated to a temperature of 70 degrees Celsius. Hydrogen gas is produced from the microbial electrolysis reactor and partitioned off via a proton exchange membrane. Um, then the hydrogen gas is cooled from 70 degrees Celsius to 40 degrees Celsius. The gas is then compressed and stored for consumer use. Here is our piping and instrumentation diagram, also known as PNID of the process. First, wastewater sludge is pumped through P101, which is actually two gear pumps in parallel, but only shown here as one for simplicity. The sludge then enters the first heat exchanger, XC101, where a recycle stream that will be mentioned later heats up the sludge initially. 
The excess is then sent to a cooling coil, EC102, and then returned to the rest of the plant. The sludge is then sent to a secondary heat exchanger, XC102, that uses steam to bring the sludge to a temperature of 70 degrees Celsius. The feed stream then enters the microbial electrolysis reactor, R101, which is the most important piece of equipment. The reactor contains a heating coil as well as three crucial elements, an anode, a cathode, and a proton exchange membrane. We see this wastewater sludge recycle stream that was mentioned previously as well. The resulting hydrogen gas is then sent to a cooling coil, EC101, which brings the gas back down to a temperature of 40 degrees Celsius before being sent to a compressor and then finally being sent to a storage tank to be bottled for consumer use. All right, so here are the main results from our design project. Our main input is the wastewater sludge with our main output being the hydrogen gas. Based on the research that we have conducted, we can produce around 255 kilograms of hydrogen gas per day. This hydrogen gas can be sold and will produce a revenue of around $118,000 per year. On the other hand, the hydrogen can be used in a fuel cell to produce electricity, but this won't make as much money. The initial equipment costs are just under $5 million with annual costs exceeding $500,000. This annual cost can be much lower if the wastewater treatment facility already has a reactor tank that can be used for the microbial electrolysis. All right, finally, here are the conclusions that were drawn from our design project. Like we said before, we can produce 255 kilograms of hydrogen gas from the incoming 300,000 gallons of watered sludge per day. However, the revenue from the hydrogen does not cover the annual costs. After the first 10 years, the net present value of the site would be around $5.5 million in the negative, so it would not be profitable to implement. To make this process profitable, more research is needed to find out how to maximize the amount of hydrogen gas produced from the wastewater while also lowering energy usage. All right, uh, that will conclude this presentation on our senior design project. Uh, thank you so much for listening in, and we hope to see you on Senior Design Day. Thank you.